Hey guys, my name is Tyler Miller and I own a small excavation company here in small town Indiana. And I wanted to start this channel to kind of explain to you guys how we got started, when we got started, why we got started, and tell you about a couple projects we've uh, taken on and future projects. And then also give you guys a couple of tutorials so that for future clients they can look back on some of these videos and see how we might attack a situation that they have or possibly other companies can learn from us like I, I'm constantly on YouTube or looking up different ways that I can improve my effectiveness and efficiency on a job site so bear with me uh, this is my first video ever so it might be a little bit monotone or something like that but just uh, give me a shot and then we'll go from there so starters how we got started um, Basically, I was working for a local foundation repair company and we did a lot of jobs. We did a lot of traveling, not so local. So, I mean, I would spend the night in a hotel in Tennessee and then come back up and go to Michigan, you know, two days later. So local, uh, local and traveling construction. And I really enjoyed it. I liked what I did. I just... Well, I thought there was something more out there. So I wanted to get started doing my own thing, but I wasn't exactly sure what I wanted to do. So basically, after I left the foundation repair company, I ended up going and buying a dump trailer and got started in doing some local hauling little stuff, just enough to pay the bills. And then after that, we went ahead and started renting equipment and took on a couple larger jobs. Then after renting equipment for quite some time, we went ahead and bought a, let's see, 2007 Cat 246B with a set of VTS tracks so that they could bolt on and be removed for different types of jobs since I didn't necessarily have the overhead cost in the bank account for two separate machines, a track machine and a wheeled machine. And now looking back, I don't even really need a wheeled machine anymore. So speaking of machinery, um, I just last week closed the deal on a 2018 T740 Bobcat. And that was a little bit different because I, I really wanted to stick with cat, but cat couldn't compete with Bobcat's pricing or warranty offers. So yeah, but um that's pretty much how we got started uh did a lot of marketing on facebook and stuff family helped out a lot with finding odds and ends little, little jobs here and there and then buying used equipment trailers and what have you so yeah but next up uh when we got started so i actually just started Let's see, I think we're on our seventh or eighth month right now, but we've done fairly well considering the times we're in, everything's expensive. So why we got started, uh, I kind of already touched on that a little bit, but basically wasn't enjoying what I was doing with the other company quite as much. And I'm actually gonna have to bug out of here here in a second as we have our uh, we have Wes pulling back up in the 277C cat from pushing some snow. We just had a hell of a lot of snow come through. So, but yeah, why we got started was basically just because wasn't reaching my full potential, I thought, with working for someone else. And here is loading on right now. So um, anyways, I will come back with... Uh, some info on some of the equipment we have projects we've taken on and then you know we'll just keep going from there maybe get some in the field footage or some footage at the shop so okay so we're here at the next apartment complex that we're doing some cleanup on for our subcontractor and 
I'll give you guys a little bit of info on how we got in with, who we got in with, and why we decided to subcontract rather than sell our own jobs. So basically, um, I had an ad running on Craigslist of all places. It seems like Craigslist, you spend five bucks for a month of advertising and then you get like two, three calls and it's completely worth it because this, uh, that call, that $5, uh, ad led me to a contract with a local landscape company that landed us, you know, thousands of dollars in snow removal just in the last month. So it's been quite the journey trying to figure out, you know, how to balance our work with snow removal for another company because then we have to, like their work takes precedence over what we have going on just because we're contracted with them and, you know, we take care of, let's see, eight apartment complexes and then we do cleanups all over the place. Like I was just at the post office a couple days ago and, you know, let's see, post office and then another apartment complex that we're not technically doing, but we went and did some cleanup over there. And yeah, so basically got that landed by Craigslist. He just called me and he said, hey, you know, are you looking to do some snow removal? I said, yeah. And he goes, well, how about you come in and sit down with us? And I think that was probably the best decision we could have made just because we can take care of eight to 10 apartment complexes and we don't have to worry about dealing with anybody other than our one uh, contractor who makes all the calls as far as um, reaching out to the complex like, hey, do you guys want push now or can it wait a little bit? Or them calling him saying, hey, we got a pile in front of a car. And obviously, you know, we're not supposed to put piles in front of cars, but when you're pushing 20 inches of snow, it's coming down at the rate of two inches an hour or so. I mean, you're just trying to keep the aisles open and we did our best to make sure that we didn't end up covering up any parking spots or uh, handicap spots but you know stuff happens and it's it's really just it was a rush adrenaline was the only thing that kept us going I think we were out for probably close to maybe a little bit over 50 hours straight no sleep six guys and it was a rush I'll tell you what so um, if that was our contract say I went out and I sold all of those commercial snow pushes. Well, then I'm trying to push snow and I have calls coming in and obviously I don't I don't have a whole bunch of employees I can just send out like, hey, you guys gotta go here, 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 and here. No, so it just simplified everything for us. Plus, in the grand scheme of things, after you spend that much time on it, and I mean, they, they definitely made a profit off of us but I feel like in the grand scheme of things we profited a little bit more for time invested and we could still focus on other projects before the snow hit so yeah I would say subcontracting for the first year maybe two years for snow was probably one of the best decisions that we've made so far and yeah speaking of other projects moving into say Let's see, last week, Monday and Tuesday last week, I was out doing a demolition job. Some There was a guy that had two barns and a brand new garage burned down due to a wiring fault. And feel terrible for the guy, but you know he got a hold of us and we were able to come to an agreement and got started. So I was hauling metal and tearing down what was left that was standing for Monday, Tuesday, and that probably wouldn't have been possible <clears throat> if I had to run around and, you know, talk with other employees and stuff like, hey, you guys got to go do this, 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 and this tomorrow and go and get everything prepped. So it was just super easy. I could focus on that. I knew there was snow coming, so I told him, I said, hey, we're probably going to leave some equipment here and go push snow. He said that was fine, and from there, here we are. Actually, still haven't been back to that job yet. 
as we have um, it's mounting off but I think the official statement was 19 inches and um, then let's see after we got 19 inches we've basically just been doing cleanups like cars moving into clean spots so then we go back and we're scooping out some some spots that were uh, that never got touched because there was a car in that spot or they pulled in before we got to it but yeah so that's basically our snow removal contract mixed with all the other stuff we have going on we're doing a couple yard installs here in the spring um, we just got done with a full house demo a uh, local guy kind of called me and he said hey I got this letter in the mail from the city and they said I had to have this house down or else and when you get a letter like that from the city and they're saying they're going to send you a bill for like fifteen, sixteen thousand dollars to pull a house down then you know you, you start shopping around and see what kind of deals you can get so we had that house down and out in I believe it was two days and then we did all the site work after that we have to return it to uh, basically looking like nobody was ever there there's never a house there so in the spring I gotta go back and seed and fertilize and stuff um, but yeah I'll, I'll throw some pictures of that in there I'll throw some pictures of the building that burned down in there as well um, then we did a mobile home demolition so this one's kind of a funny story but the guy messaged me on Facebook he said hey I have this mobile home and I'm looking to build a pole barn on that property and I don't want to look at that mobile home so I go out there take a look at it and he's like so what do you think it's gonna cost I'm thinking well you know you probably got three 40 yard dumpsters here and then the, the guy gets to talk and he's like, yeah, well, there was a, a barn back there and it burned down as a meth lab or something. Um, and then the people in the trailer got evicted and he nabbed like eight, eight or nine acres out of that deal or something like that and decided he was going to build a pole barn. So, yeah, that's kind of how that went he goes well can you do your best fit all in one dumpster I was like well we can do our best but it's not gonna happen so he ordered one dumpster and then we threw everything in that dumpster and then we had to wait on a dumpster because the dumpster company was like well we'll be there this afternoon no they were there the next day and we needed another one and we ate the same thing it, it took a day between each dumpster so that took us three days and that was a learning curve because now I know I will never let the customer order dumpsters themselves again and I uh, I actually I mean there's nothing wrong with that it just took longer than what it should have and you know we lost some time on some other projects that we were taking on but I would say let's see we probably could have had that done in a day but now I've actually I've reached out to the dumpster company and we have come to an agreement where we can actually get what's called a live driver and basically they, they send us a truck and a dumpster maybe two dumpsters and then at, normally we do two dumpsters depending on where we're at but so basically they bring the truck drop the dumpster then that guy picks up the other dumpster, goes and dumps it, comes straight back, gets another dump, because we can have one of those dumpsters loaded in 45 minutes with the excavator. Um, so that's basically how we do demos, and I can go into some pricing and stuff in the future if that's what you guys would like. If you, you know, just, just let me know what you guys want to know about, and then I can kind of grow from there. But at this point, it's my first video, so I have no idea. But next up we'll talk about equipment so equipment i already told you guys a story about buying the cat 246b and last week <clears throat> i was pushing snow with it and i hit a speed bump and lost all electric power so i thought oh, maybe it's the battery cable so i start messing with it and this snow is coming down uh, an inch to two inches an hour which was hard enough to keep up with with eight apartment complexes that we were taking care of and then different odds and ends we had to go take care of as well during that whole process so i'd been looking into getting another skid steer or purchasing 
trading in and purchasing a new one. So I called my local Bobcat salesman who I'd been talking with for a couple weeks and I said, hey, if you can have that machine ready and I can come pick it up within like the next 20 minutes, I'll take it. And he said, deal. So I drove out to his house actually because I just demoed that machine on Monday and I told him I thought I wanted it, but I wanted to think on it. And and so he, he's like, I'm just gonna take it home so nobody else knows about it. They hadn't even had it posted yet. So just closed the deal and signed the papers on that yesterday and traded that Cat 246 in. So that's pretty much the gist of what equipment I own personally. Um, I have a buddy of mine who has been doing this since he was out of high school and he has a Cat 277C and a Cat 308E. Um, and he actually just bought that Cat 308 like a month ago now. And uh, we, we do a lot of our projects together. And it works out because in the grand scheme of things, we're not bidding against each other on jobs, we're bidding, with, bidding on them together. And at this rate, when I was renting equipment, I was spending more on renting equipment than I was than like just subcontracting him to come run with me. And you know, he can hop in my machinery and run it and I can hop in his and run it. So it works out great because he might have something else going on or I might have something else going on, but that job's still getting done. And I can hop in his excavator on the job site and I can load concrete or something if I have to. Or if I'm gone, he can hop in the skid steer and start grading, whatever, what have, I mean, it's, it basically just comes down to what we're doing, but you gotta get the gist of it. So that's uh, pretty much all the equipment that we have. And I just picked up this trailer. I don't know if you can really see it, but probably not. Um, but I just picked up a new trailer last week because I had been hauling my skid steer around with nothing but a dump trailer and I just wasn't cutting it. It was real scary in the snow. So um, purchased that dump trailer on I believe Tuesday last week before the snow because I told myself I said I have to have a new trailer before I go into the snow and, um, I had one of them picked out was gonna go get it and then I decided no nah, I don't really want that that's not really the avenue I want to take it was a gooseneck and I don't have a long bed so I can't keep the fuel tank and the uh, the toolbox in the bed and have a gooseneck in there so you win some you lose some I ended up buying a bumper pull 14k uh, 18 foot trailer um, Wes he has a single axle dump truck and he's got a plow for his pickup truck so when we were plowing he had a buddy of his running the plow and yeah so it's we're we're getting it all worked out and in the spring I plan to purchase a mini excavator I don't know if it'll be bobcat or cat but I, I don't think i'll stray away from either of those brands i'll probably end up going with bobcat as much as uh wes tells me not to he's die hard cat so uh well i think that's pretty much all i have and i'll i'll tag some pictures and videos in here i, I have a a tiktok and instagram facebook like everybody else so uh there you can find my tiktok at if you look up Tyler Miller, um, it's I, I believe it's Tyler Summit LML, and then Facebook you can search up MC Excavation and Demolition LLC, and then if you look up on Instagram you can you can find my personal account. I actually don't have a business account for Instagram. I I didn't see a whole lot of benefit from it because I can run ads on Facebook and Instagram through our uh, through our ad provider. So don't have to have an Instagram account and I just don't see it being as beneficial as Facebook. So, but I'll, I'll, I'll dig into that a little bit deeper in a different video. We'll just actually talk about marketing and that's it. But, uh, yeah, I'll give you guys a couple walk arounds or something. And, um, then a couple videos during the snowstorm and a couple bit videos from demolitions or, uh, some grading jobs. And I think that's it. So, Alrighty, well. Sorry,
Yeah, on that. We're loaded up now. Got the skid steer warming up on the way out there. Right. So, ended up getting a phone call. They want us to come push the snow uh, now. So, that's what we're gonna do. Uh, but, oh, it's cold out there. Thank <laughs> you.